Good Saturday morning, everyone. I have to be a bit quiet so my bass-like voice don't wake up the whole city because it's six o'clock in the morning. I'm actually on my way to the bus station. I'm heading to Oslo to pick up my new next bike. In this video, of course, I'm going to eventually reveal which bike I ended up buying this time. I'm also going to explain my thought process behind purchasing this very bike and also why I want a bike now instead of waiting and buying one during the winter or even at the start of the next riding season. But before we continue, I just want to say thank you very much to everyone who commented and shared their um, yeah, suggestions and thoughts about my situation. Uh, kind of suggested my next possible bike. I've read all your comments and they've been all very, very helpful. Now I am in need of a cup of coffee, as you might see, because I have barely slept. I am very, very excited. So, thank you. Well, that's the typical Johannes for you. I am 40 minutes early for a bus. People aren't even this early catching a flight. I have a cup of coffee in my hand. I have music in my ears. Now I'm going to lean back and enjoy the ride. Ah, I guess this is how it feels like riding a Goldwing. Ah, so, this is what my adventure riding has been missing this aspect of riding the ability to jump on the highway and just chew out some road miles in order to get to a place in a comfortable fashion i picked up my bike around three hours ago been riding around in oslo uh, just cruising around picked up some coffee for marn and uh, met some family and now i've been riding on the highway home to christian for around two hours and you know as expected that's you know mainly the reason why i made this switch but it's nice to kind of confirm that this bike is just much much more comfortable and smooth on the highway doing highway speeds uh, i have a few hours left until i reach home when i'm back i will i will explain and talk a bit about my thought process behind purchasing this very motorcycle. Please watch that because I, th I think there's some valuable information for you there if you ever find yourself in uh, the same situation uh, that I've been in. And then I will reveal this next bike. All right, so I am safely back home in the basement with the bike and uh, I'm going to reveal it just about any second now. Uh, a couple of days after I made the video about thinking about selling my 701, I called a dealer in Oslo and um, because they had this, uh, this summer campaign on a few different bikes and um, uh, the one that I was interested in uh, was the Honda Africa Twin, a 2021 model uh, that I could get for 3,000 euros off new price, which I think is a pretty good deal. Uh, and you know, the, the Africa Twin, uh, I've ridden it before, uh, but that was the adventure sports version with the DCT. So it was a very wide bike without clutch. So that was a bit alien, but I still, it's a Honda, you know what you get. And uh, it's a bike that ticks a lot of the boxes for me. And a lot of you guys recommended that um, Africa Twin, the standard version as well possible next bike so I called them and I talked to the guy and I was really interested in this bike uh, I, so I, I went to the local Honda dealer the next day to see if I could test ride one but they only got one unit this whole season and that was sold before it hit the dealership floor so that wasn't really possible uh, but still I was getting closer and closer to this very deal uh, it happened a bit fast but you know when when I decided that I'm going to sell the 701 and this deal pops up, uh, it's very interesting. It's very easy to be drawn into this particular deal, especially when it's a good deal as well. 
so I was I was starting to kind of imagining myself riding an Africa Twin uh, as my next bike, and you know I I liked the thought, but I uh, I said to myself that okay, if the Africa Twin is my next bike. I am going to do something that is a bit unusual of me. Uh, if I want something, as I said in the previous video, I usually look for things to make me want this bike even more, almost like confirmation bias. But this time I said to myself, all right, so Johannes, if this is going to be your next bike for many years to come, it has to be, you have to be sure. So I decided to sit down by the table and and try to uh, kind of uh, prove to myself why I shouldn't buy the Africa Twin. And if the, the Africa Twin passed this very test, that would mean it was a bike that was meant to be, right? If that makes sense. And so I sat down by the table, took out a piece of paper and a pen and started to write down uh, all the things that I would get with the Africa Twin. And I... For some reason, I'm not really sure, but I decided to compare the Africa Twin with the T7 because that is a bike I know. I know that bike very well. I've owned it for a year and I couldn't compare the Africa Twin with the other bikes of interest like a Tiger or the 1290 because those are bikes that I don't have enough experience with. So I would, I would be actually just comparing the specs of these two bikes and there's not that much value in just uh, spec, spec, uh, spec speculating. So I decided to compare the Africa Twin with uh, the T7 and I boiled it down to two things that I will get with the Africa Twin over the T7. A bigger engine, that's nice, I want that. Uh, I want a bike that I can tour with uh, because that's a lot of the daily riding that I'm doing. And I also want a bike that I can ride two up with as I said in the previous video. So a bigger engine, yes please. The second thing, that the Africa Twin has over the T7 is the electronical package. And, you know, I'm sure the electronical package is, is, uh, is very nice on the Honda. You have cruise control, sophisticated traction control and ABS, and you can fine tune all of that um, through the, the dashboard with all these buttons. But as I sat there kind of realizing, okay, these are the two things that I will get with not only the Africa Twin over the T7, but all the other bikes of interest. The Tiger 900, the 1200, 1290, uh, 890, 901, Touareg 660, GS, all of these other bikes that I've been looking at. The two things that they have over the T7 in this comparison is a bigger engine, yes please, but also a lot of electronics. And as I sat there, I started to think, hmm, Am I really going to pay eight, nine thousand euros more for a bike just for a slightly bigger engine and all of these electronics? And that made me really think. So I think uh, me saying this is kind of revealing my next bike. Uh, I am not going to pay that much more money for an electronic package that I personally don't really care about. I I found my 701 to be highly electronically uh, yeah, gifted with the quick shifter and ride modes. Yes, the, the traction control on the 701 was really good, but for the most part, I, I just didn't use it. So no, I'm not going to spend more money on yeah electronics. All right, I have come full circle or full circus. That's okay too. I played my card safe and I bought another Yamaha Tenere 700. It's a bike that I know. I know exactly what I'm getting when I'm buying this bike. In my previous video, I had three main criteria for my next bike. One, it had to be an adventure bike with at least two cylinders. Check. The second criteria that I had it had to be an adventure bike that is as dirt capable as possible. And in my mind, I was thinking about the heavier bikes. As I said, the Africa Twin, the 1290. But there was this one comment from Dominic, a dear friend of mine from Germany, who goes under the name of Spielberg here on YouTube. He said that, be careful now, Johannes, because 
it's a huge gap between the middleweight bikes and the heavyweight adventure bikes when it comes to dirt capability. In my mind, I thought that once you are above 200 kilograms, it doesn't really matter if it's 20 more or yeah, 30 more. And I haven't really checked that myself, so I don't know, but I trust you guys. And when he said that, I started to think, you know what? I have to be a bit careful because if I buy a very heavy adventure bike, that is not very dirt capable, especially with me as a rider. You know, I can I can end up regretting that. And um, so I, I, you know, I started to think, which bike should I go for? And you know, the more I thought about it, the more the T7 made sense because it is a highly capable off-road machine as well. Even though it is a heavy adventure bike, anything over 200 kilograms is heavy in my book. So I think I've met that criteria as well. The third criteria that I had uh, was that I wanted a bike that I could ride with a pillion. And this is where I perhaps uh, missed a little bit. This is not the most comfortable touring or two opera pillion machine uh, in, in the world. But a lot of you guys, again, I really appreciate that you chime in with your thoughts about my situation. A lot of you guys said uh, pretty much, Johannes, be careful prioritizing a bike that can ride with a pillion over a bike that you enjoy to ride solo. Because no matter how much you ride with a pillion, you are riding solo 99% of the time. And that made me think as well. So I went to Marn and asked, how much do you realistically see us riding pillion and how uh, will the trips look like? And, and she was like, yeah, the occasional trip to the, the ice cream store and you know once or twice a year we can take a couple of hours and ride to a hotel and check in there. We agreed that there's no super long tours down in Europe with luggage and, um, and camping gear on our bike or my bike in the nearest future. So I kind of realized that you know I, I don't need I don't need a GS. I don't need a 1290. Adventure R that is super capable of riding with a passenger on the back Because we're not going to do that as much and while I'm heavy luckily Marn is not uh, neither is my my son who is going to ride with me in a few years when he grows up. I Don't have to have uh, a thousand um, CC bike or more so I think I slightly checked that criteria as well yeah, and personally, I'm still all about riding off-road. Uh, riding on the highway is just a necessary evil to get to the trails that I want to ride down in Europe or wherever I, I want to go. But I just needed something that was more comfortable on the road getting to those places. So when I first reach the trails, I'm happy that I'm on a 200 kilogram bike instead of a 230. Now, I could talk about this for hours and I guess a future video uh, is is uh, in store but the reason why i wanted the bike this quickly i initially wanted to make this into a playlist where i can go test ride all the different bikes that i was interested in but test riding bikes in norway is really hard the dealerships usually only have one or two bikes um, on the floor and you can't demo those because they will lose money so you you have to buy them uh, pretty much uh, before you test ride them and that's why I wanted to play this safe. I couldn't just call the Triumph and say I wanted a Tiger 900. Uh, this bike I know, and again, with all the electronical things, uh, I don't want to spend eight grand more on a bike uh, when I'm perfectly happy with something as simple as this. But the reason why I wanted a bike in, in the basement as soon as this uh, is because I want the bike to be adventure ready when next season arrives. Uh, I could have uh, you know, seen through the winter if there came up a, a better deal on a T7 or a similar bike. But uh, if I buy a bike during the winter, I have to wait until next season to start to ride it, to break it in, to modify it to my needs, suspension, taller seat, all of these things. I want my bike to be 100% ready as soon as the snow melts here in Norway because I never know what comes next around the corner. Suddenly there's an event down in Europe that looks super interesting that I get an invitation to or a friend of mine says, hey, let's go. 
and I need my bike to be as ready uh, as it can for next season. That's why the bike is in place. And talking about modifications, I will make uh, a bike build series uh, after T7 as well. I have, I have a plan for this bike. I don't think it will be as involving as the 701 bike build. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to spend that much money modifying my bikes as I did with the 701. Lost quite a few dollars on that bike, but it is what it is. There's a few things that I have to do. I have to adjust the suspension to my weight and a taller seat for my long legs. First impressions of this bike compared to the 701. I am going to compare the, the two in a future video. This feels like a Goldwing compared to the 701 on the highway. It is extremely comfortable with have, uh, having two cylinders. The second thing I, uh, I immediately felt was how much better the brakes are on the 701. The brakes on this bike uh, are extremely soft. Okay for dirt riding, not okay for the road, but I, um, I guess it comes to, down to weight as well. This is 50 kilograms heavier, so there's more mass to stop. And the third thing is the suspension. How much better the WP Explore package on the 701 is compared to, to this bike. This is heavily undersprung for my weight and that has a lot, of, a lot to do with it. Uh, but still, uh, the, the WP stuff on the 701, phenomenal. On this bike, I could feel every single piece of rock on the road riding home from, from Oslo yesterday. But again, heavier bike could have uh, something to do with it. I am going to respring it for, uh, for my weight. And the final thing about this bike before I end this video, so you can chime in with your thoughts on my next bike, is how extremely good this engine is. I was riding in fourth gear doing 90 and then uh, traffic slowed down and I just rolled off the throttle and I was in 28 kilometers an hour in fourth gear. And when, you, when I was applying throttle, being used to the 701, I was assuming that I was just going to bum 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 out of there because it's so low in the gear and, um, or in the RPMs. And this, this bike, the, the, this, uh, this engine feels like the DCT on the Africa Twin that I test drove a few months back. You just roll slightly roll on the power and just happily goes on without you know it feels like a dct feels like an automatic transmission just it doesn't gear uh, or shift your gears but just so extremely happy with this engine and yeah as i said this is what i've been missing for my adventure rides i am done ranting now i'm looking forward to hear your guys opinion about this bike as always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you guys the next time.